Hey guys, what's going on? This is a Modern Grunt, part one of a full part series formed by me, Eric. Ah, the classic IED exploding scene to start things off. What we got next? Oh, got a helo landing. I actually think this was a general, if I remember, coming to inspect the PB. We had a police call before he even showed up, and then go set up Gordon. Uh oh, firefight video, gotta include that. Look at that 50 cal. Going to work. Come on. Oh yeah, get some. And then, platoon photo. And finishing with platoon patrolling through a poppy field. Look at that. Hey everybody, this is Eric from American Strong Podcast. It's a brief little opening for this full part series I'm going to be doing called The Modern Grunt. It's going to be part one of the series. This is just going to cover my four years in the Marine Corps. My mindset throughout which is going to be the whole backbone, the underlying subject throughout the whole series. This video is going out to reach any of our viewers, listeners, thinking about joining the infantry, especially the Marine Corps side. Uh, I wasn't in the Army, but I'm assuming it's pretty similar for the time period that I was in. Uh, if any of our listeners are Army, feel free to comment on this. You know, Give me some tips, pointers, whatnot. Any Marine Corps guys on here, let me know what you think about it. Leave some comments uh, in the comments section. I'll, we'll try to get back to you uh, as far as that goes. I'm just going to give it, start off with a short little background about people who are thinking about joining the military, especially the infantry in general. I think this is a pretty common factor. I was brought up with a, in a very patriotic family. And I think that had a great deal to do with the route that I chose, uh, military, and then eventually infantry. And I was just blessed to have that. Every kid in America should have that, and it sucks that they don't, but that's how it is. We gotta start getting back to that. I knew from a really young age I wanted to go military. I think like sixth, seventh grade probably. Uh, I joined the Marines. Because, you know, dress blues are the best uniform out there. Yeah. But seriously, they are. But that wasn't the only reason. Um, Marines just have that history of being the best, the hardest. Especially looking at stories from World War II, Vietnam, just stuff like that. It was challenging. It, uh, it posed a challenge, I should say. And that's what I wanted to do. I think... Most guys who go special forces, uh, infantry, they like challenges. They want to, you know, challenge themselves, to be the best they can be. And I think that's um, that's why they go that route. That's why I did. Um, another reason I went infantry is, to be honest, 9/11. You know, I was in third grade. And I still remember it, clear, clear as day to this day. And at first I didn't understand what was going on, but once I did, it made me mad. I wanted revenge. I wanted to join the military. I wanted to go kill the people who did that. To be honest, that's why. It's it's hard for me to understand why you would join the military to be anything else other than infantry. I'm not taking anything away from, you know, Pogues, person other than Grunt, for those of you who don't know. But, I mean, you can go to college and do that. You can go to a Votech school to do that. You join the military to go kill motherfuckers. All right, plain as day. That's why I did it. That's why a bunch of other guys in my field did it, and that's why everyone clicked so well in the infantry. Notice you will dip and smoke in the grunts. Believe me, if you don't, you're probably queer. You can learn how to drink too, but that's another part, so stay tuned for that. But um, let's start off with this. So, boot camp, June of 2011, I left. If you want to see that, if you want to get a recap on boot camp, go look at the other video I put up. It was like, oh, I think, a couple days after I got, got back, I put that up. So if you want to learn about boot camp, go check that one out. Moving on from that, I, want to take, I do want to take a little piece the pride factor you get when you leave boot camp can work good for you in some ways, and it can work against you. 
you know, you get that PGA and you think you're on top of the world. You feel like you're on top of the world. Like, finally, fuck yeah, I'm a goddamn United States Marine. Let's go. Like, take on the whole world. One, you can't. Two, if you think you can, you're probably going to get hurt. If you think McMap is going to save you, if you just want to go start a fight with someone bigger than you, use McMap, you're going to get your ass kicked. Don't do that. All right? But, you know, the pride factor is good. Gives you a little bit of boost in confidence. Gets you going in your career. Only to be shot down as soon as you get to SOI. To be honest, I hated SOI more than, more than boot camp. All right? You get out, you're on top of the world, you get all this freedom. You come back, and it's not that the combat instructors are like drill instructors, which they're not. They're really chill and awesome. But um, they only give you like just like a brief glimpse of freedom, you know. You know, you're a Marine, so your esteem's up here, but then you're an SOI. And this is when you start to learn how the Marine Corps works, all right? You're not on your own. Okay, you don't get to make your own decisions. You're going to get babies at like you're five years old. This is when it starts, when you hit SOI. And this is going to be a big part of decisions I made going through the Marine Corps and just how it is, all right? So SOI, as far as the men mental part goes, sucked. Okay, I hated that more than I hated boot camp. SOI is good, though. It gives you your basic skills that you need, you know, patrolling, fire movement, fire maneuver, uh, introduction to mount, defense. I don't think we did any call fire or anything like that. Just focused on just the basics of being in the infantry, which is cool. Uh, I did enjoy that. Um, when I was in, I got I got there in like it was October, so I had we had a Thanksgiving '96 in between, so they condensed the training. So other than just four days off for Thanksgiving, I only had a weekend off. So I was like constantly in the field, which which freaking sucked. I hated it, but um, got that over with. So that's all done. Uh, let's move on to getting to your first unit. Alright, so my first unit was 3rd Battalion 9th Marines, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Now, this was back when, I'll say, the boot to senior relationship was was how it should have been. Alright, I'm going to touch more on that later on. When you're, when you're a boot, you have to know your place as a boot, all right, to a senior. Now, keep in mind, this unit had just gotten back from Afghanistan a couple months earlier, so they were all salty and pissed off. They had to deal with us, which, um, as you go on in your infantry career, you'll find out how terrible having boots is, okay? So, when, you know, when you get to your unit, understand you're a boot, okay? You're back to square one. Yes, you graduated SOI. Yes, you graduated boot camp. That means absolutely nothing. You are nothing. You are lower than dirt. You are a boot. Okay. Act like, don't act like a boot. Sorry. Don't mean that. Understand that you are. Don't think that you are. Don't think you're going to get treated as special. This is the fucking infantry. This is hardcore. This is life or death. Okay. Your seniors are going to be the one that train you. Listen to them. Take in whatever they have. Whatever knowledge they have to give you. All right. Alright, so you get to your unit, you're gonna get hazed, alright? That's part of, that is tradition, that is the initiation, that is the lifestyle of being a grunt, alright? You're a boot, your seniors fucking haze the shit out of you, okay? I have so many freaking hazy stories, I'm not even gonna get into that because I could just go on and on and on from making, you know, you have to chug beer out of a combat boot to your room getting tossed because you didn't do something. From, Getting the shit beat out of you to police calling cigarette butts and all over camp was you just, you know, shit like that. But that is how it is. That is your place as a boot. Okay. And that is the senior's place to do that to you. That is just how it works. Alright, Marines are alpha males. You're supposed to get in fights. You're supposed to get drunk and just fuck shit up. Alright. That's how the grunts are. Okay. Now. Sad to say, but my peers and I were kind of the last product of how grunt should be. All right, even when I 
got in, there was all this hazing scandals going on, guys getting NJP, all that shit. And to be honest, it just started making the Marine, the infantry soft, which is just terrible. It's not how it should be. Marines are, Marine infantry is hardcore. You're there to kill people, all right? That's your sole purpose. Okay. That's just what it is. Um, I'm going to hit on that in another part of this video, get more in depth to that. So I'm going to stop on that there. All right. So know your role as a boot. You're down here. Your seniors are up here. All right. Don't forget that. All right. So now I'm going to roll into the training that you get once you're in your unit. Also, the mindset that you have to have as a, uh, as a boot to that unit and what you're supposed to do. All right. So. Like I said, boot down here, senior up here. Your job is to take every single speck of knowledge from your seniors, especially the ones that were in combat. Okay? Because they're the ones that are going to be fighting with you. You know, their, your lives are in their hands, their lives are in your hands. So believe me, they're not going to slack off on any training. They're going to train to the best of their ability because they don't want to fucking die. And, you know, they're not going to say it, but they don't want you to die either. All right? So, training a unit was different than anything you get in uh, in SOI or boot camp because, like I said, those are the ones you're going to be deployed with and possibly fight an enemy with. So, it's a lot more intimate of a relationship when you're training from <clears throat> uh, the guys in your team, your team leader, and your squad leader uh, going up to your platoon. All right, so, um, you know, take everything very seriously. Okay, put forth your best effort, and that goes from doing PT in the morning, classwork during the day, uh, classroom work during the day, and then uh, eventually field ops. Okay, uh, field ops when you're in your unit are I like them more than SOI. One, because you know, you're you know, that's like your home. Okay, those are the guys. Uh, you're going to be with. And those are guys you really get to create that bond with. This is where the brotherhood bond starts, okay, is in training. Uh, I think some of my least favorite training was in the defense where you had to dig fight holes and shit like that. That sucked. Uh, I remember doing, it was like the middle of February, and we went out for like a month and a half to Fort Bragg. Just straight, straight month and a half out in the field. And the snow, the rain, the cold. Um, good experience, bad experience. You're going to get that in the infantry. You're going to be stuck out in the field. You're going to hate life. But that's part of the grunt life. That's what you signed up for. you got to learn to love it. Eventually you will. Probably my favorite type of training in the infantry was MAUT, which is urban combat training. Learned uh, clear rooms, shit like that. Just, uh, you know, high speed shit, I'll call it. So, everyone always had a lot of fun doing that. Um, right before we deployed, we went out to, or, uh, right before 3 9 we went out to Cax down the Mojave Desert for a couple months. Fucked around out there, did some shit with uh, tanks, air support, artillery, mortars. Any of y'all that were in, you know what Cax is like. It's desert, it's hot, it sucks, but. It's the best training you can get before you actually deploy overseas. Okay. Um, going back to, I had a little bit of a different experience in, uh, in my four years. Uh, 3 9, right before they deployed to Afghanistan, for whatever reason, I don't really understand, but uh, some numbers didn't add up. They ended up cutting a bunch of us from the uh, deployment roster. I was one of the ones that got cut. And um, at the time, I was real upset, you know, because there's, like I said, those are your brothers, those are the ones you trained all the way up for this, and they're going to go to combat without you. And that is probably one of the worst feelings in the world. All right. So that's most likely that doesn't happen often. Uh, I don't really expect that to happen from here on out, I, you know. Uh, like I said, I don't know what the reason was, but that's what happened. So, um, you always have to be mentally prepared for curveballs and stuff like that thrown at you. You don't get to decide what you do. 
Okay? People decide that for you. So that's just nothing to keep in mind. Uh, going to the infantry. So I know tidbit I had on training was um, when you're in 03, I was 0311, you're pretty much going to be in 03 everything. 0311 is learning pretty much everything except mortars, right? You're going to learn how to shoot machine guns. You're going to learn how to shoot rockets. You're going to learn how to, uh, pretty much, you're going to learn how to drive trucks. All right, I was a driver. I got training, got my military license and all that stuff. So 03 everything, I like to call it. You're going to learn to do a bunch of stuff. So don't just think you're going to be just a basic rifleman. Uh, actually, before I deployed to um, Afghanistan, I was cross trained as a designated marksman, which was cool as shit. Um, it was kind of a last minute decision, so I didn't go to the technical school or anything, but I got trained up by our snipers, and that was just really cool. So, um, like I said, keep your keep your mind open when you're going in. You never know what you're going to learn, what you're going to be doing. You might not just be, you know, 0311 rifleman. You could be really anything. So also just uh, keep that in mind. All right, guys, so this pretty much wraps up part one of this video. Like I said, I got cut from that deployment. Three and I ended up deploying to Afghanistan, and I got stuck behind an RBE, which is the remain behind. And if any of you have been on RBE, or this is just a heads up for any of you that are, it is just pure debauchery, okay? There's like... No accountability, really. You can pretty much do whatever you want. It was a fun slash bad time for me, I'll say, in the Marines. Um, I, I rarely PT'd. Most of the times, I just, I drank. I got so fucking drunk. I was never on base. No one ever really cared. Um, so, like I said, RB was one of the most awesome, chess shitty parts of uh, my Marine Corps career. One, I couldn't be with my buddies, but two, I was just fucking off to whatever I wanted, which was... Kind of cool, kind of shit at the same time. But um, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this first part of my four part series. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to be following up on my story through my four years as a Marine, 0311. Um, and also, I'm going to hit into some other aspects of being in the infantry as far as what barracks life is. Or stateside lifestyle, stateside lifestyle, and then deployment lifestyle. Also, I think in that next video, I'm going to hit on my either the next one or the one after that. I'll hit on my deployment to Afghanistan, and I'll pretty much just be devoted to that. I got a lot of cool stories and uh, stuff from that. So I hope you all keep watching. I'm very interested to bring the rest of this information to you guys. <clears throat> and um, help y'all out as much as I can. So, um, yep, until next time, should be coming out. The next video should be coming out next month, so stay tuned. I'll try to be giving y'all some updates on when that'll be coming out. In the meantime, check us out on Instagram, America Strong Podcast, Facebook, America Strong Podcast. Still working on that website, uh, which could be America Strong Podcast as well. To uh, bring out to you guys, try to reach out a little more and try to get y'all some more material as much as we can. So until next time, this is Eric from the America Strong Podcast. I will be seeing y'all next time. Have a good one, guys.